It's Mike Phillips with PaintballX3.com, and I'm here with Dan Rankin, Firestorm Paintball, owner of Team Fierce, one of the most dominant teams in the Southeast United States. And, Dan, I heard a rumor that in order to join Team Fierce, one of the initiation ceremonies is to actually go and clean all of the trophies with a Q-tip. Is that true? Well, it's true, but we do it as a team. So, you know, everyone pitches in and helps. But uh, recently, one of our most dedicated players, Brian Lundstrom, who's also a really good cameraman and has, uh, you know, self-sacrifice being our motto. He's, uh, he's offered to do that. Very good. Very good. And you give him the brass polish and everything. And and it, I heard it takes him at least two weeks to get through them all. Is that true? That's Yeah, he's, he's, he's very meticulous and, uh, and it's very time-consuming as you can see. <laughs> very well. He does a great job. But I, I want to talk about Team Fierce. My, you know, I've faced you guys on the field many, many times without much success. And, and how many years has actually Team Fierce been around? As Team Fierce, we've been around since uh, 2005. 2005, so three, three and a half years. Now, how long did it take as a team before you guys got over that hump and started winning tournaments and started doing really, really well? Well, fortunately for us, we were able to pick up some players with experience. So most of those players had already been to the point where they'd been over the hump. They had had some mild success um, on a local basis. And so we picked a lot of the, you know, some talented players up from uh, Team Aftermath out of Fort Myers. Uh, they were based out of uh, Extreme Rage in 2004, one of the more dominant teams. We picked up some of those players, and then uh, we had some of uh, moderate success with uh, Firestorm Paintball, which was sponsored here through the shop. And uh, formed with those two teams formed uh, Fierce in 2005, and then uh, had a very successful season in our first year. Very cool. Now, when you first launched Fierce, because there's going to be a lot of teams um, that are probably going to want to try to duplicate your success. What would you say? You you started off at the local scene first before you moved on into the national tournaments, or how how exactly would you say uh, Fierce's path of success started? Well, I think. Uh, for every team, you know, the recipe for success is basically just getting the guys together. You have talent, you have a real strong worth ethic, uh, consistency, you know. Um, I think for most teams it's going to be the same. If you look at any successful team, the recipe for success or their formula for success is going to be, re you know, for the most part the same. And that's pretty much what we did. We, uh, you know, took a lot of the players with, with talent and had them practice, you know, together. Some organized practices uh, worked on uh, the basics and fundamentals on a local level, and then as it, as we felt confident with our uh, ability as a team, then we branched out into the national scene. Very, right, very good. Now, another major concern with with teams that are trying to hit not only just the local tournament scenes but also the national tournament scenes is obviously money. I mean, it's you know, the tournament paintball is very, very expensive. How have you found? Over the course of three, now going into four years, to to manage the manage the money to to I mean you guys are always at almost every single tournament at all the national tournaments you know rain or shine you're always there. What are some of your uh, secrets or just some of the tips that you could share with some of the up and coming teams on how to manage money, how to get it you know how how to just put it all together to make sure that they're at all the tournaments like that. We're still trying to figure that out to be <laughs> honest with you. I mean uh, we've come into you know like I explained to you earlier. Uh, you know, this year we came into some money towards the end of the season, had a really successful season. But uh, one of the biggest things I've learned and the advice I was given by a lot of the pro teams is that, you know, with success, uh, you know, and, and as far as financial success, you, you win some money, but that money goes quick. Mm -hmm. You know, the players, you get 10 players on a team, and the, the money just starts adding up with uh, airfare, practicing, um, hotel expenses. You know, you always get the one college guy that's, uh, scraping pennies together to you know pay for lunch and next thing you know you're buying lunches and you know it gets out of hand so just trying to come up with a reasonable budget and really stick to it that's that's what I've been trying to do it's, it's hard to do with, with the players especially with most of the guys with uh, you know as college players and with the economy and everything it's it's getting tougher and tougher now you finished 2008 with just an absolute bang um, talk to me about what exactly happened at World Cup that also we're still trying to figure out uh, we had a really good year um, I think overall in uh, PSP, I was told, I'm not sure, I'm just figuring out the, uh, doing the figure still, but we had the highest rate, uh, was the hard, highest margin of victory mm -hmm. for, for 2008 um, in PSP. Just consistently, the guys were doing really good as far as uh, the, the victories was 7-2, 7-1, 7-0. Um, we only had, I think, four or five losses for the season. Wow. So the, the guys were, but, you know, hard work ethic, mm -hmm. you know, self-sacrifice, all the, you know, the hard work, it paid off. Um 
at and the you, end of the season. You won the Divi- Division Two yeah, World Division Cup two. and Division Three World Cup. Correct. Correct. Wow. And you still weren't done there. Most people would have packed up and went home after that. Now, talk about what exactly happened in San Diego. Spider Cup. That was, <laughs> that was a big one for us. So, I mean, we were saying pretty much, you know, we win Spider Cup. You know, 2009, as far as the team goes, we'll, we'll be able to continue playing and, and be well-funded. Because, uh, you know, as it stands now, we have no outside funding. It's pretty much whatever I get it from extra shifts at the fire department. If the shop's doing well, you know, I can help fund the team to some degree. But needless to say, it's very expensive. So... How much would you say, now obviously you've got a great store, it's very well known throughout, you know, throughout the west coast of Florida, Firestorm Paintball, takes great care of their customers, you guys have got, you know, great product selection, I mean, there's people that even drive from Tampa to come to Firestorm Paintball, would you say that that having a store like this, how much would you say this would help, or how much does this help your team? Um, In the sense of whatever sponsorship deals, especially with the economy, again, that's a big thing you'll hear in throughout the season I'm sure with uh, in regards to the sport is everyone's going to throw that in every conversation uh, the economy um, right now the sponsorships are really based on the numbers that are the being generated by the the sponsoring teams uh, home field or store mm-hmm. so you know basically the more the more I do as a store in the field the better sponsorships uh, our team will be you know supplied with mm-hmm. um, and that's a pretty and that's a pretty big shift in mentality from from what a lot of people you know proved maybe 2005 2006 it was all based on winnings you know but now obviously with with people cutting back their their sponsorship money now they're looking more you know how much you know where you're playing out of your local area what kind of sales are we generating from that from that market that's the thing with a lot of the players now as we talked about earlier is a preconceived notion that you get to a point where you're getting consistent um podium finishes in an event that everything should be paid for well the sponsorship the sponsors look at that differently there it's 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 not the same as it was two years ago it's mm-hmm. pretty much based on the business that stores doing or a field's doing with that sponsor um as far as in regards to uh the, the store as a resource for the, the the team i mean you know i've got inventory so mm-hmm. if you know one of the guys needs something you, you saw earlier there's guys walking around on shopping sprees today mm-hmm. so uh you know it helps that hey we need something i have it it's not like i have to wait you know for a couple of days or anything like that um but they do they're paying their own way you know the guys they they work hard and work af- extra shifts or whatever they can do to to help you know pay for their their own portion as our fair share program very good now i know if you, if you could share maybe some secrets on um, recruiting. A lot of teams make a mistake of recruiting the wrong players that just don't fit with their team. That can cause a lot of friction within the team. Teams end up falling apart because of it. Um, you've recruited great players. They got great ethic on the field. They're 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 very honest players. They 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 come after you. They're just you. You've always had one of uh, of just the best eye for talent. If there's maybe a secret that you could share in terms of uh, maybe a team, how do you choose talent? What are some of the things that you look for from players that are interested in joining Fierce? That's a, that's a good question. I think a lot of times a, a coach's ability to pick up the right player for their team mm-hmm. is, is needless to say, key. Um, a lot of guys will pick up a player just based on, hey, that's a really talented player. But maybe that player's work ethic or attitude in general it won't be copacetic with you know the, the guys that they have at the time. You know, uh, The guys we have, they have a really strong work ethic. Um, some of them are driving two, three hours uh, to practice you know, for two-day practice. Uh, you know, some of the guys are practicing three times a week. You know, and these guys are wanting to do whatever it takes to be the best team that they can be. And they all get along, and that to me is key. If I have a guy that's a really super talented player, but he's not getting along with my guys and he's problematic or, you know, there's some of the guys that bring a lot of drama to the team. We don't deal with that. You know, we're, we're calm and collect in the pits. If there's a problem, we look at it as, hey, in the pits, a lot of times you'll hear a lot of guys get fired up. You know, competitive nature gets the best of us all. But... um as far as we go, the way we want to ha- handle it is say, calm and collect, level-headed, what's wrong, how do we fix it, mm-hmm. and then take it from there. And I think that that contributes to our success. So, Very good. Now, now obviously, we talked about recruiting. Now, what are some of you guys, like I said, I've faced you guys many, many times on the field without much success. I always look forward to play against you guys, but I, my teams have very rarely beaten you guys in practice or even in tournaments. What are some tips that you could share maybe with, uh, you know, some of the teams that are, you know, maybe rookie, you know, Division three, Division two level uh, that you that you can share with them to try to help them just overcome sometimes that, that they just need that extra push? What would probably see if you could sum up one secret of your success? Uh, what would you say for Team Fierce has really been just one, that one thing you guys can always fall back to that, that guarantees you that podium, that, that very consistent podium finish? 
I think really the, the answer to that question would be the fundamentals and consistency in practice. There are a lot of teams when they show up, um, you get into you get out of practice what you put into it. And that's what, one of the things we talk to the guys about. If your guys are doing conditioning and someone's over there doing um, a half-ass job, if I can say that, <laughs> a half-ass job, he's, if he's putting in 50%, that's all he's going to get out. But if you got guys that are going over there and really going, they're not just going through the motions, they're going to uh, increase their ability or work on their skills, um, we use a, the, the three fundamentals of paintball, move, shoot, talk. we got to work on all those. Move, move faster, uh, more precisely, uh, shoot more accurately, and talk communication is key in the sport. It's a team sport, it's not just an individual. And a lot of the guys now, especially with X-Ball, they've forgotten that um, basic fundamental of paintball as far as just talking. i got a guy over here who's like 10 feet away. I have no idea what's going on. I can't make out heads or tails of what's going on from the sideline. It's like a bunch of squawking birds most of the time at best. <laughs> Talk to the guy next to you, you know. Right. So working on the, the fundamentals, that's really what we're focusing on this season. That's what we focused, focused on last season. And um, consistency, like I said, a lot of the guys will practice, have a really good practice, but then maybe it's like two or three months of just goofing around, playing a couple of points, and then talking about being ag or whatever it is now you know they're like hey this is the coolest gun i've ever shot and you know i mean you figure out what it is you want i mean everyone can has to look at the sport of you know do i want to be a winning team or do i want to just go out and goof around and have fun you know we want to win you know and i know the other guy on the other end of the field when we're playing they want to win do we want to win more than they do that's the question and we say uh you know that's you know work work as hard as we do because that's we don't want we don't want to go out there and fall short Right. And I say to the guys, like, there's a lot of times we've left tournaments saying, what if? Mm-hmm. You know, you have a feel like you have the your heart ripped out of your chest, you know, right. and you leave an event where you're like, I, only if we had worked on this a little bit stronger or maybe we had done this, you know. I'm like, that what if question is in any sport, I'm sure. You know, we've right. got a Super Bowl coming up this weekend, but someone's going to be going home saying, what if? We don't right. want to, we don't want it, when game, game time comes on Sunday, we don't want to be that team saying, what if? Right. Very good. Now, obviously, equipment makes a, a major part into it. You know, you obviously got to have consistent, you know, high-performing equipment when you're competing at that tournament level. Now, uh, Fierce was lucky enough to pick up who for the 2009 season. We're, we're proud to be sponsored by Dye. Like the, the best, in my in my opinion, in the opinion of most, some of the best uh, products in the in the industry. Very good. Very good. Accurate. Best shooting gun I've ever shot, actually, DM9. Very good. And then that's on off the record, whatever. You won't hear me say anything else. It's a good shooting gun, so. Very good, very good. Well, once again, Daniel, I really appreciate you talking to uh, Paintball X3. And uh, so if you guys see Daniel Rankin or Team Fierce at any of the events, stop by and say hi. And uh, once again, I really appreciate your time.